So earlier this year, SRAM introduced a non-electric version of their transmission drivetrain. It's available in two different models, the Eagle 70 and Eagle 90. And we've had our hands on the top of the line Eagle 90 drivetrain for a little while now. In this video, we're gonna chat about how it performs. So Blake, first up, the transmission Eagle 90. Yeah. Um, it's the first time we've seen transmission without a motor and battery. Um, tell us a bit about why you think maybe SRAM decided to introduce a mechanical version of this drivetrain into the drivetrain family. Yeah, so obviously um, it's it's no no new news um, that SRAM have been you know basically solely focused on their Axis um, drivetrains initially with the the Eagle Axis and then the Eagle Transmission Axis um, only just a couple of years ago, um, and there really hasn't been anything to note. Um, with mechanical drivetrains coming from them for some time. Obviously, they've still been manufacturing them, um, still been getting specced on bikes and all that sort of good stuff. Um, but there was a lot of sort of non-believers, I guess you could say, around the axis, um, around the electrical portion of it, which is, you know, I've, I've lived with it for, for years now. And, you know, I've, if anybody's tried breaking it, it's me. And it's pretty bloody reliable stuff. Um, but obviously, naturally, there's people that want the simplicity, um, that mechanical feel out of the shifting and all that sort of stuff. Um, and obviously the cost as well. Like, um, you know, it's no secret that it's, it's not, you know, the, the cheapest sort of parts out there, um, especially when you've got, you know, something of size hanging down there with rocks and all that sort of stuff. So there's, there's a couple of factors there of simplicity, um, affordability, um, as well as you know the old older school tactile feel of a cable shifter and all that sort of stuff. So you know there's definitely definitely a couple of different factors there, um, and I think they've done an awesome job with how they've managed to tick all of those boxes. Unreal. So obviously a lot of similarities have come across from the Axis range into the Eagle. Yep. Um, like we're talking basically the same cassette, same it's always still 12 speed. Yep. Um, but like tell us in terms of the similarities between. The rest of the um, drivetrain, the transmission, like the design of and shape of the derailleur compared to say like the, the GX version or whatever, um, how similar is the design and the sort of the, the function of the rear mech? Yeah, so obviously, as you mentioned, JT, apart from physically the derailleur and the shifter itself, it's everything else is the same, basically. Um, obviously, we've got like a new sort of more affordable crank set compared to the, the GX or the XO Eagle Axis um, drivetrains mm -hmm. or transmissions rather. Um, but the, the derailleur itself is still based around the, the T-type full mount um, around the, the UD, the, you know, the UDH um, swap out. You take a UDH universal derailleur hanger off and you put the full mount of the, the T-type derailleur straight onto the frame. So that's exactly the same. The, the cage is pretty similar um, and the, the modularity of the rear derailleur is very similar in the way that each individual piece of the derailleur is available as a spare part. So awesome. if any one part of the derailleur um, happens to, to break, which again, these things are super reliable, um, you can replace just that individual part instead of throwing the whole thing in the bin. Um, so mm -hmm. from an economical point of view there, that's, that's obviously a massive help. Um, but with without the motor and the need for a battery mount, like a battery interface in there, obviously the, the physical, the size of it is a lot smaller um, and a lot lighter as well. Um, so, you know, it's, it's sort of a, a dual, you know, dual advantage there in that everything's sort of shrunk down a little bit in the body of the derailleur. Um, cage is still the same. The actual mount to the frame is still the same. Everything else is able to, to shrink itself up in size um, and weight as well. Yeah, touching on that, the weight, we're talking over 100 grams less. Now, a lot of that's gonna come down to the fact that we don't have a motor in there and we don't have a battery, yep. but also just the, the, and the middle of the derailleur is essentially hollow. Um, whereas obviously with the, all of the rest of the Axis family, there's quite a lot of, um, quite a lot of well, going on in there, I guess you'd say. Yep. But yeah, the, one of the things that's really interesting about the Eagle transmission, it's just super, super lightweight. Um, mate, let's talk a bit about how it rides, okay? Because that's what I guess most people want to know, especially if, if you've got someone that's ridden an Axis yep. um, drivetrain, so the electric, and they're considering going to the mechanical, or maybe someone that's had a mechanical, just like regular GX um, yep. you know, Eagle drivetrain in the past. Um, tell us a bit about what you can expect from the feel now that you've ridden this drivetrain for a couple of months. So comparing comparing the, the transmission to transmission, mm -hmm. um, axis versus mechanical, it's so similar, it's not even funny. Other than obviously the, the shifting 
experience is different. It's, it's you know, what we remember from years ago. It's, it feels like a mechanical shifter, which yeah. obviously it is. Traditional click. Yep. Yeah. But as far as actually climbing up the cassette goes, it feels the exact same as Axis transmission. Like you can throw as much power as you want at it. it. To be honest, it does feel probably a little bit quicker. That's been a complaint of some users before in that it doesn't, the Axis, the electric doesn't shift up fast enough, yeah. um, which like, what are we talking? Fractions of a second, like, come on. But it, it does, you know, the, the direct cable link does feel like it does shift up slightly quicker um, with the mechanical. Outside of that, the trail performance is so similar, it's not even funny. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I remember from Eagle Transmission, so like non-axis, non-electric, um, one of the things I always liked about the shifting was just how positive it felt, like that yeah. click and like snap, yeah. and you really notice like, oh, I've changed the gear here. Yeah. Um, is that kind of something that the, um, the transmission has brought across as well? It's still got that real positive with the shift of that click and that, that was crisp. always yeah that was always something that SRAM was known for over its competitors was that there was a direct you know it was you could feel it through the pedals you could feel it through your finger and you could hear it as well you knew exactly when you were your gear was fully engaged yeah. there was no double sort of guessing there um and that's that's no different now with the with the new mechanical transmission like it's it's audible um and you can feel it straight away yep the full gear is fully engaged and we're we're ready to go well there we have it for mechanical lovers people that enjoy having a cable people that don't want to worry about having a battery that might go flat or whatever the new eagle transmission has arrived very similar ride performance yeah. to the Axis, the electric um, group sets. But as we said, 100 grams lighter, several hundred dollars cheaper than the cheapest, you know, the GX version um, Axis. So yeah, definitely a in pretty impressive um, addition to the transmission family. First time we've seen it mechanical. Um, yeah, there's a lot we're liking about this. We're gonna keep it a little bit longer. Um, just to keep it more of a long-term test, but so far durability has been well off the charts. Have yeah. you had to tweak it at all? Nah, literally other than two or three turns of the um, indents on the barrel adjuster, as expected. A little bit of cable stretch. Cable stretch yeah, as the sense. cable stretches. Um, you know, we haven't got any crazy new technology with cables that don't stretch yet. <laughs> um, but outside of that, bolt it up. It is super, it is so much easier to set up than a general, uh, you know, a generic um, group set because we don't have high and low limit screws. We don't have B tension screws. All of that setup is the same as the, the Axis transmission. Um, so you just, Pop it in your in your allocated spot for what frame you've got. Um, set your chain length, bolt it up, away you go. Unreal. Well, there you have it. That's our wrap-up review of the mechanical transmission Eagle 90 group set.